it's Firebird JP, and I'm back again with another gas mask video. Um, this mask I got for you today is a current issue piece, and it is used by the Czech Republic's military to, and it replaced the um, the CM4 and the M10 gas mask. So, um, guess I'll just stop talking, and we'll get right down to it. The Czech Republic was in need of a new protective mask, as the M10 and the M10M series gas masks were exhausting their lifespan. So, in the late 90s, the company Gumarni Zubri Incorporated designed and produced the now current issue mask of the Czech Republic's military, the OM90 gas mask. While very aesthetically pleasing, and honestly a bit intimidating, it's safe to say that it's best not to judge a book by its cover, and I'll show you why. One thing you may notice right off the bat is the OM90 looks very similar to the S10 gas mask. It is my reason to believe that the mask is a loose copy of the S10 series mask as it does share a handful of features, which I will get to in a minute here. There are some stamps on the face piece. One is the date, 1998, the next is the size, size 2, and then finally some production stamps, F90-2-1, which almost certainly stands for face piece 90, size 2-1. First off, the face piece is made of black bromobutyl rubber, which is a standard process done on most gas masks nowadays. Now, this is where I'm going to start critiquing the OM90. Please keep in mind that I'm looking at this from a mechanical and practicality standpoint, such as an engineer or even a military personnel standpoint. You are free to have your own opinion about it. The eye lenses are concave, just like the S10 mask. However, unlike the S10, the OM90 provides a lackluster field of vision. Notice when the mask is worn, how the eyes come very close to the inner edges of the eye lenses. From the inside, there's a very awkward black spot right in the middle of your eyes. Hell, even on the official Gumarni Zubri website, they claim the OM90 only has an effective field of vision of 73%. If they would have made the eye lenses maybe slightly bigger or moved them slightly closer to each other, then they wouldn't have this problem. The voice emitter is made of plastic and actually works pretty well. Gumarni Zubri seems pretty confident with their design and claims the use of a VPU would never be needed. However, if they so happen wanted to use a VPU, the placement of the drinking stem lever would probably ultimately eliminate the chance of attaching one. The filter can be fitted on either the left or right side. All you have to do is remove the filter plug and place it on the respective side or load dual filters if the situation called for it. A standard in most masks, no complaints here. The XL valve is placed on the bottom of the face piece and is covered by a very sturdy plastic shield. No other complaints here as well. The drinking tube wraps around the voice emitter and is hooked on the side. No real concerns here. However, the cap on the canteen coupling is a bit of a pain to undo. The mask features a five point fabric head harness with a mesh padding. Mesh? Great. Fabric? Great. But a five point head harness? You would think that for being in the 90s, six point head harnesses would pretty much just be a standard, but Gumarni really wanted to take the leap and offer an outdated design. Aside from that, I have a very hard time adjusting the straps, but I cannot say all examples are like this. On the inside, the mask has a very generous peripheral seal, which is a good thing. However, the oral nasal cup is something to behold. I'm willing to vouch that no one has a face that long and thin. If it was rounder, wider, and shorter, like most faces, then the mask would probably be a tad bit on the comfier side. Finally, the drinking stem is a bit awkwardly placed. When it's up, it's resting right in front of your nose, and it's a bit close too. If it was moved to the bottom and you push the stem up to your mouth, then it might prove to be a bit more efficient. I've covered everything about the mask, but wait, I'm not done. I still got the rest of the kit to go over. The OF90 filter is a 40mm NBC rated filter, and when it's still within its lifespan, it effectively protects the user for 24 hours. Nothing wrong there. The carrier is large and made of a waterproof material. It fastens with buckles and easily stores the entire kit. However, the straps are something to laugh about. The shoulder strap is great, very thick material. The waist and leg strap is literally two pieces of shoelace. No buckles, no buttons fastened together. No, you gotta tie it. The entire aspect of the kit baffles me most. We have went through almost 100 years of development on gas masks and respirators alone. For some reason, this is what Gumarni Zubri went with. Genius. Absolutely genius. Lastly, we have the drinking canteen with a secondary coupling inlet. The cap on this one lacks a little. It's a pretty much ready to crack right in half. Overall, my final verdict on the OM90 is that it looks extremely cool. It has one of the most intimidating designs I've ever come across. But this mask is all bark and no bites. The cons heavily outweigh the pros. Rumors of the CM6, which is actually a law enforcement and civilian mask, is going to phase out the OM90. Which I certainly hope is true, because this mask, in my opinion, should not see service for another day. Alright guys, that was my review on the Czech OM90.
Um, like I said before, it's not the best gas mask in the world. It's honestly probably the worst current issue that there is right now. But regardless if it's useful or effective or not, I really don't care. This has been one of my most wanted masks ever since I started collecting, and I'm very stacked to finally own one. Um, I got this one from another collector who is actually on YouTube, and his name is Rush Rushbury, as you all know him. Uh, I bought this off Dan, he really didn't have much of a connection to it, and I really wanted one. And this actually previously belonged to Johannes Moller from the Gas Mask Lexicon website. Um, so I'm very honored to own one of uh, Johannes' previous pieces to keep his collection going. So, um, that's all I got for you right now. Um, I have some other videos I could do. I'm going to get around to them. It's just trying to find master a video worthy or worthy of a five minute long video. It's kind of hard to do considering some of these I don't know anything about. So I will get to them whenever I can. So, um, this is Firebird JP signing out. Peace out. Keep collecting and have a good one. See you later, guys.